want to I want to bolster. Not that you need my bolstering at all, because your you guys your conversation was great. Um, but what we have a very small house, by the way. Yeah, he can't get away can't from get, conversation and this very thin walls. So unless he hid out somewhere, but that's part of what. Unless it's asked, can I have privacy? You know, everything in our house is shared. We've learned yeah. that. This sure. Is, this is, this I'm is very comfortable with that. Okay, good. On yeah. my and I don't want to pose a threat. I just I want to I want to bring comfort because the language is very comforting. But I what I heard in your question was how do you do it from the very get go and, and to connect with what Carrie was saying is that I can already tell what you're asking for is about to present itself. That your question is actually being again um, to connect with Carrie is that if we set the atmosphere with the intent of desire, we will encounter the desire of our intent. Exactly. And so what's about to happen is exactly what is necessary for you um, that I we are we become realized in the language based on the concept of letting go to conceive. Letting go allows us to grasp. And yet I can see what's happening in your material world around you as more peripheral is letting go. You're not even having to let go. It's letting go for you. And that is truly a gift. The difficulty of I agree with Carrie is that your ability to navigate it to produce the intention of why it's being let go of because yeah. that's a very lofty concept because most of us like Carrie was saying that most of us want to project it outwardly when the realization is you me and her mm. and so in your being a gift and most of us don't see the gift correctly because it's something that we expect it to be what we expect it to be Yet in the integration of God, some assembly required, our authentication is based on our current moment that we get to another current moment until fully assembled for authentication to really do itself justice. It's fully invalidated through validation. It needs not. That. It needs not to express itself. It needs not to validate itself. God does not need validation. It is simply in the greater expression of realizing I let go of everything and in that I conceive myself. So in other ways, you could say, hey, yeah. hey, yeah. I am, I am my moment fully authenticated, but in that reasoning, it's because it's the same word for origin. That means origin mm -hmm. and validating. Mm -hmm. So, but validation in conclusion is invalidated. That's an oxymoron. It zero points itself up. Mm -hmm. So that's really what's wrestling is what I heard is what I heard. This, this is what I heard is that it's, it's showing all of us. God does not need to be validated. Right. God is fully validated as invalidated. That is the nurturing of mother and father coming to a conclusive realization of what truth is as it stands on its own. And wherever it is, it simply is. It will express itself without the opening of a mouth. That's right. And that's what I see coming for you because I can feel your heart's intention and I can sense your desire now the difficulty or the job before us for all of us is to assemble ourselves in the capacity of that which you desire yeah. and authentication is based on where we currently are neutralized yeah. not pendulum swing from left to right authentication is the validation of your current moment and that is always neutralized yeah exactly no distortion no distortion yeah shalom so, and I say that to bolster you, I see your heart and I, and I, it's a privilege actually to hear the conversation to, to be where you are as a doctorate and then to have your foundation shaken or potentially in a place of removing. I comprehend that. We comprehend that. We, we do. We had to walk it. We walked it. Oh my God. We had to walk away from our foundation because we thought we knew a thing. Several times. Right. Not just once. And it wasn't, just like you. it wasn't Several until times. we surrendered our title yep. that we were given the trusted title of what it is to be truly what we were seeking that we thought we were yeah and that can threaten a lot of people because yeah. there's there's a oh boy there's a lesser name or a lesser narrative or a lesser title that we think we are but again um there's so much in this palestine is but a word it's a mm -hmm. frequency of, and if it has a pale little med in it then it's already telling me wow this is a mouth of the teacher it's already telling me there's something to be learned here I already know the word. I already sought out the word. It's not a people, yet it is a people. It's a collective as we as I, <laughs> and there's no separation. The illusion is the separation. Mm -hmm. God is That's good. That's not real. And so when we get this, and this is a gift for you again, the people, unfortunately, most of the people in the land itself, very 
few are able to see on that level because they're still oh, in yeah. such a principality of an influence of separation. Yeah. Therefore, what? They double up the threat, right? By the doubling up the response, right? And, and push the squeeze. And they push the squeeze. <laughs> and so, but really to walk away from that and have an objective perspective to see that, to hear what, what you said about it, wow, that's wisdom. Now wisdom would say, apply this, yeah. apply that vantage point and that perspective to render that true and clear through the activation of not having to respond as a double power in, in the lesser narrative, right? Don't do that. Neutralize it. It's saying, I want to, I'm seeking God is neutral. It's the judge magistrate's position of not being one way or the other. It's completely resolved as a neutral being sees everything in absolute love and in that wherever i am my atmosphere neutralizes everything in my sphere of influence i have no fear of this or that them power. her or him right well it is the power that most are seeking but they do not know how to minister it to themselves right. always an out thing so the power <laughs> dwells within me as the magistrate and in that, everywhere I go, I don't care if I'm on a plane, a submarine, in a crowd, I neutralize all energy because I am the authority. Ege. 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 So, I, so, so again, it's just, it's the, it's the practical haya, it's the practical being of God. I'm in my experience. You pose no threat to me. I pose no threat to you. Now, if I'm really aware of that level of authority, I emit it out called spherical. It goes out for me and everyone in my sphere of influence is now feeling the balance of neutrality and they and they're they're not projecting threat nor they do they feel threat that's what's coming into the world right now they feel peace they feel peace they feel shalom yeah. my god this is like i mean i just want to you freaking kidding me this is like I mean, this is, um, wow. It's, you're <laughs> was, I don't have any she had to, I was going to say it was so profound that Yana had to express herself in Hebrew because English was not doing it. I love that. Yeah. Well, I love well, that. Well, I felt your words actually it went up from my feet, yeah, right to my, I felt it go right up into my ears. Yeah, it gave me goosebumps. Um, this is the gift that's being offered to you right now i can already tell the vibration you would not be here right now you would not be in our yeah. sphere of influence you would not be here this is very we're very sensitive who is drawn in and who is repelled because yeah. this is the, the so something drew you in as a potential offering yet as you know the offering is based on the surrendering of service that's the language of master of subordinate and if subordinate. we the re, just the idea of what you just said is so magnificent. I mean, I'm having to hold back the tears on that. Just the possibility of that. That's what's coming. We're, we're going to see a people do not fear for what you think you're going to miss. Because you're, you, you will. Because you will grasp the potential of what's to be. Yeah. That's what's coming in is that we will no longer need, um, really the limited perspective of vocabulary or a limited articulation of what we think it is. What's coming in is the completed knowing, and it will be in the resonance frequency of what we call light. It will be a crystalline vibration that will cause people just to shudder because they're gonna realize something has transferred, something has become the intention, and now it's walking amongst us. Mm -hmm. That is what's coming, mm -hmm. and it's asking you, would you be willing to surrender a lesser for a greater? Mm -hmm. If I was to remove this obstacle of conference for you, would you become the intention of what it is to be a meeting begets a meeting? This is the great encounter. This is the greater encounter. Mm -hmm. Every day, all day. Yeah. Every day, oh, all yeah. Day. oh Every yeah. Day. Well, that's what it's asking you because I can already feel it. I can feel it on me that it's saying, are you prepared to meet the totality of yourself? back to origin you call it, you call it authentication but are you ready to be authenticated are you prepared to be authenticated because that's what's coming in is authentication is looking to take all your documents of what we have summoned ourselves as a resolve to mirror it as a reflection to say yeah deed meets title therefore title is given to deed hey, yeah. hey yeah. again hey, yeah. 
And this is this is happening very quickly right now. And so again, I'm saying this to bolster you. Let what needs to fall away fall away. And again, I'm only sharing this. I'm not I'm not telling you to do anything. I never impose myself on anybody. But I'm saying what a beautiful opportunity before you. That everything is being removed yeah. as a potential obstacle. It allows you a fresh perspective to do what is necessary. To expand. So you can step into the mantle that you seek. That's just too freaking awesome, man. Yeah, really, really, really good. Well, I'm going to jump through the screen and hug you both. I, just, I feel I, it. I feel it. I, I feel it. Just can't, wait can't to even this. contain it. All I can tell you, I cannot wait. I cannot wait until we can actually be in the physical presence with you because of what I feel just connecting on Zoom. I just, I look forward because it's it's the coming home. It's it's the feeling of coming home as yeah. family. Yeah, and you, that's, okay. that's so beautiful. Yeah, it has to be this way. And again, I look at the proximity and just the, I feel this vibration again in the natural world you this has to well again if you don't someone will fill the spot i know that and even with us if we don't someone, someone will fill the, the spot because it has so, to happen but so perspective is and the opportunity is this what are we going to do with this again everything for me is in the orchestration of organics i do not press anything i'm not anywhere where i do not need to be spirit always tells me exactly where i need to be it always opens up that way but in that what i see is an amazing opportunity because we fill outside of ourselves, we fill prophecy by first infilling it within. We've already infilled it. We've already fulfilled it. Now the outward world will see the manifestation of what is infilled within you, within Carrie, within myself, and others, because we're not the only, there That's is right. many. That's right. This is the fulfillment of all things. And it has to be the union and the unification of one resolve as one people once again. God, some assembly required. There is no more separation. Alafim. 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 Well, I'm raising my hand and saying, "I choose me because I, upward, inward, because I, 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 yeah." Who gets an opportunity like this? I mean, oh. well, one who has placed their intent and desire to make it happen. You are already placing this as an intention out there, whether you are consciously doing it or not you were already drawing this to yourself yeah and that's why it's so amazing is that if we can sit in that to realize that it isn't it doesn't we don't have to have that false humility to go why me why me no it's because i intended for this to unfold in my life at this moment in this time because this was the desire i came in with for it to be fulfilled in this lifetime so this was something that was if you want to say it was predestined I have no problem with that because all I'm doing now is just showing up and letting it roll out through me. I don't have to try to make anything happen anymore. I just get to be a part of the ride. You get to be a part of the ride. Ken gets to be a part of the ride and we get to do it together. But it, wow. But it still produces the intention. It, it will, it will in its own standing, it stands on its own again. So, exactly. so again, everything that to, just to connect this, I always love the practical. So when I walk away from something, I just don't like listen to words like, wow. Um, I, but I'm always looking at, well, if I see Melchizedek, what's the practical? If I see exactly. the, the language of Qumran, what is the practical? How does that speak to me? And so in that, again, it is giving us the opportunity to always subject, object, object, subject ourselves. The vantage point of higher perspective, right, overstands the subject. But, but Rita, I am the subject and I am the object, right. right? Right. And this is the language of the law of the sea. I stand over myself. I'm I'm submerged as subordinate, but yet I'm overstanding as being the object, as being salvation, which means I've risen myself out of my own sea. That's that's Yahushua. And so in this vibration, though. Again, it allows me to always see that no matter what expression comes upon me, it's giving me the opportunity to neutralize it. Mm -hmm. Because only that will stand shoulder to shoulder what's coming. So whatever time we have in this window that we're in, everything is an opportunity to see from the higher perspective to say, oh, another opportunity comes before me. And if I see the object and the subject correctly, I can at light speed move to the subject and then back to the object to say, oh, I'm going to respond this way. I will neutralize it before it even moves into the progression of duality. 
because that's the seat of the magistrate. That's the that's authoritative good. seat. That's really good. So everything's a perspective. In, in your position well, of your language, you have much knowing, yet there still is progressions. We have much to learn from you. You have much to learn from us. But that's that to me is a relationship, and that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The divine exchange of all things comes to a point. And this is where, in landing the plane on that, this is where the Aramaic word for judge, Dina, Dina. Dina so it's Dalit Yod Nun Aleph comes in because the absolute state of judge is one that is sowing seeds of a very strong foundation that is meant to unify. Or, Arm Not, or Armandina, yeah. the sovereign nation standing as source, has yeah. the potential of what it is to be called divine nation once again. The firm and faithful ones. Right? Uh, firm... uh, D Dina is Aramaic for judge? Yeah. That's very like here, good. Here's Here's something that you'll find interesting for future conversations. When you start taking a look at Aramaic, you're going to see so how closely resembled it is to Hebrew. It won't take you any time to be able to bring that in and unify them. You'll look at it. It won't. It seriously won't take you any time. Right now, you're like, oh, it's a completely different language. Mm, yes, I know. But I promise you, with what you know with your own tongue, that the bridge with Aramaic is going to be so simple. It's just simple. If we can do it, you can most definitely do that. Totally. Because you'll see it. You'll see the patterns. You'll see the movements. You know, go, oh, I get it. And it won't seem foreign to you. It'll seem natural. It'll seem very natural. I promise you that. Yeah, I just have to build the vocabulary. I can read Aramaic, of course, like I read Hebrew. So I but I don't have the vocabulary, but that's easy. That's just yeah, okay. Well, 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 that's how, that's how we learn though. Again, again, time in, time in, like you're going back to your question. How do you do it? Well, um, a doctor is needing a patient, right? The, the one yeah. fulfills yeah. the other and that's a, that's a play on, but yeah. Play one, on words, I love it. Patients and patients. Patients and patients. <laughs> so to become a doctor, we're dependent upon the patients. And, and so that is exactly what the language is to become a healer. You become the doctrine of the position based on patience. And so the long suffering produces the language of the master. Mm -hmm. And there's no way around this. And, and as we know, um, humility as going low is actually the oxymoron of the room. It rises you. Mm -hmm. And so it's the application of realizing I know really nothing. I only know, but our, but our ego wants to define it because the ego wants to be heard to say, I need this event to justify my position. Well, at some point, and this, this was the hardest lesson that the Spirit taught me, the hardest lesson it was a few years ago, and I remember I was outside talking to my son, I, and, I, and the Spirit said, you need to step away and allow Carrie to come forward. And I was going, well, I'm not wrestling her anyways, because my, my whole SIM card is like, I have a defined um, um, structure in my head, I guess, that my... You mean with your ego? Yeah. Or you talking, oh, you define ego? Yeah. Yeah. Ken has a very defined ego. He has a very defined emotional center. And I don't like titles and I don't like names and I don't like projecting and say, oh my goodness, you're this or you're that. I'm like, stop doing that. For goodness sakes, I'm all of it. And so are you. I don't need to be limited from your limited perspective. I appreciate your perspective, but there's something more happening. Um, but what it was teaching me was at some point, and this goes back to validation and invalidation, because this is where this came from. And it's going, well, that doesn't make sense, spirit. And it's going like it makes absolute spirit no sense, is that we all seek validation. And there's a negative validation and there's a positive validation. Validation is the stamp of approval that invalidates, right? And so that's what it was teaching me. It's like you're at the place of pinnacle that really it's like it's like you're a producer of the movie, but you're not on the stage, but you're the producer of the movie. And so, and you may, in, whether you want your credits up there or not, or really, if you truly are in the knowing of who you are, then remove my name as the credits. I need not, I need not to be justified for the act and the performance spoke for itself. Wow, that is so big. That is big. That's big. It's very big. It's the biggest thing that I had to stumble upon. And then it taught me to be sufficient in myself and knowing that I need not say anything just by being that is the true authority and most of us are trying to articulate it from a standpoint and a perspective that is in that we've already diminished the potential of greater mm -hmm. and so when we realize it's the power of silence by simply being is a totality 
of being authenticated and in that you're now proved as invalidated god assembled exactly these are the quiet ones that walk in the earth they're just a whisper and they don't need the platform they, they don't desire it they don't want the name they don't want the title they don't need to be anywhere other than where they are in their current space that's okay. that's that's peaceful to me that's lovely mm -hmm. and so that was the biggest thing that the spirit was teaching me and you know, I, you know, we in our own household, we've been sharing that frequency. Um, and I'm not going to lie, it's difficult to hear things being shared. Then going, oh, my, my self wants to grasp, but not for the sake of self-promotion. It's for the assistance of, of another so they can step into the realization of silence. It's allowing that because very few people would conceive this. Is right. It? threatens them it threatens the ego it threatens the ego mm -hmm. but there's very few people that there's only very i've only met well one one that i've seen outside of ourselves that that is starting to learn to, to oh my gosh i realize this now so anyways i say that again to bolster you because i do believe you have the capacity because that's exactly if i could take this line to a point that's the point you need not be expressed in any other way than just you being authenticated in the generosity of your own nobility there you are and by you moving in that direction there is nobility again in the earth that is origin that's the same word for origin and it's the same word for authentication it means nobility restored headship as god as the creator as the intention of god walking the earth again is here once again wow and that's it sounds all so it. simple to say thank you, but I, we get it. We get it again. Ken, like Ken was saying, there gets a place where no words are required. So, what I uh, allow myself to do is just that. I can do all of it or a piece of it, whatever I have the heart to do. So, um, my I think my only job is to be open and trusting yeah that's it and most, yeah i was going to say the most profound speech i've ever and I was, i'm new to the church i was never really churched other than knowing i had many dreams as a child but um, when i did get introduced to the church the most profound conference i ever went to and this was i think the yes it was it was the, the first conference i went to the gentleman got up and he was deemed a prophet that was all new to me and but what what authenticated it for me was he stood there for 15 minutes and he cried he didn't even speak. He, he came to the pulpit and there was so much humility on him that it broke it pierced me and actually just i can recall the frequency and i can actually feel it actually right now just by bringing that forward he just put his hands in his face and he just wept and cried and cried because of, I think he didn't have the capacity at that time to really fully comprehend what, where we were and what had to transact. And he had no words, but he could feel the weight come into the room of where we are as a response of people. And the only thing he could do was weep. And that was like, I left that going like, that's it. That's all I needed to see that, that fulfilled in me and put hope in me to say, wow, a man not need speak, but wow, there's power in the weeping. It's fabulous. Thanks, Brother Ken. I love you. <laughs> this is family. This is where we use the word haliva, that this is an expression of haliva, not hallelujah, but haliva. And that's a conjunction of halel and well, it's the, so I give you a little bit of a background story. When we were in Crestone last October, there was some profound stuff that happened, like unbelievable things happened. A lot What's of Crestone? Crestone, Colorado. Um, Google it. it done. Crestone, Colorado. It's our, we've done it two years in a row. Um, we'll be there again. Uh, we were hoping to do, um, be there this summer, but it may have to wait until the fall. We don't know, but we at least want to go there once a year. So the last two years we've gone basically around the feast of uh, Sukkot and, and not that the people that are there have any Hebraic anything at all because they don't, 
but that just is when it seems to fall upon every year is when we're there is during the Feast of Sukkot um, with the solar calendar, not the lunar calendar. And that's another conversation for another day um, based on the fall. So you go to a conference? No. No, they asked us to come. We, we just gather as family. Um, it's it's very loose schedule. We we just come to hang out in each other's presence, bolster one another, enjoy space with one another, spend time with one another. But it is absolutely not a conference. We don't want to do a conference because we're about relationships. It's um, community. It's community. Your, your yes. community. Yes. It's our Crestone community and it's in Colorado. So it's a little bit more central. And we have people that come from different places of the U.S. to join us there. But when we were there, um, there was, God, this is a long conversation for another day because we don't need to go into it. But okay. regarding Aliva, uh, there was something that happened with a woman that was there. Um, don't need to go into detail on that, but it was a very, word, very, profound, very, like, very, profound, very, very, very profound, profound, having to do with Taya Tefi. Um, if I don't even know if you know who Taya Tefi is, she was in the time of Jeremiah, wasn't it? Jeremiah's daughter not daughter or, or sorry um no it was hezekiah's Hezekiah, daughter Robert, yeah. wasn't it yeah. so hezekiah yeah. and, and taya tefia was his daughter and jeremiah took her away and brought her to ireland ireland to ireland anyway that's a whole nother story another topic for a complete another day that was bringing down the temple yeah so so this is something that has been very near and dear to Ken and I in our journey, mm -hmm. something very, very private, prophetic that we very tell private. nobody, no one, no one, no one, no one at all. It's like, this does not get broadcasted. This is between our home. There was a book that found its way to us years and years and years ago before we even got really into the Hebrew per se. And it spoke volumes to us and we just resonated with it. And so we just kind of tucked it away. So we go and we have this meeting with this woman and there's obviously a profound connection there. And I'm not going to go into detail because it's just too long of a conversation, but she had said a word to Ken because of a certain act that he did. And she mentioned Haliva. And she said the word Haliva and she was told through spirit that she needed to share that with Ken and he would, he would recognize it. And like, he needed to hear this word Haliva. Well, and she doesn't speak Hebrew. She knows no Hebrew. She didn't know zero. Zero. But there's a whole lot of Hebrew stuff that was coming through her that we we're like, oh my God, that's a Hebrew word. And so she's looking at us. We're looking at each other, going, "This is profound." So she says, "Haliva," right? Well, a couple days prior to that, I was in a meditation. Like it was total. If you were to say "open heavens," like data streaming coming, Milfa streaming through the body, it was happening like at light speed when we were in Crestone. We couldn't stay on top of all the prophetic, the things that were being revealed. It was it was a little almost too much for me. Pretty overwhelming. It was very overwhelming to me. And um, I was given a phrase. In a I was, good way. Yes. I was given a phrase and something to sing um, that had to do, and it was, the, the letters that were given to me were Yod Vav He, which I thought was really interesting that it was uh, Yod Vav He. And I, and I thought it was connected. I was like, okay, Spirit, why are you bringing Yod Vav hey to me because I was like, where's the additional hey? Because I thought the spirit was wanting me to sing Yod Hey Vav Hey or something, whatever. But no, it was Yod Vav Hey, Yod Vav Hey. Okay. So I was toning it. We were in this beautiful, I would love to send you a clip of what was happening. It was so profound. This place that we were able to go in and sing. Oh my gosh. Anyway, there was a whole song that I was supposed to sing, and I was singing it in Sanskrit and Hebrew, very simple. Um, and this phrase, Yod Vav Hey, Yod Vav Hey, kept coming over and over and over and over again. And I, it was driving me nuts. I'm like, I don't understand this. Why Yod Vav Hey? Well, then um, when we met with this woman named Maya, she then tells Ken this word, Haliva. And I was like, oh my God, there's that Yod Vav Hey, Haliva. It was with a Vav and not with a Bet. And so here, a couple of days prior, this huge song that I was feeling connected to Shalom was welling up in and through me. I couldn't shake it. She says the word Haliva, still not connecting until I came home. And then I looked at the spelling of Hallelujah, and I realized that it was the morphing from Hallelujah to Haliva. And if you look at the parent roots, the switch of the, the Vav and the Yod and the Yod and the Vav to that new position, the frequency is actually in a place where it's elevating the divine feminine frequency see, instead of diminishing it. When we say hallelujah, we're diminishing the divine feminine. When we say haliva, we're elevating the divine feminine. So it was a really, really profound shift that 
So that's what we say now when, and we'll call it Haliva rising because this feminine energy has been suppressed for so long. Halal and Lila are meant to unify as one instead of them being separated, that divine feminine being shamed and crushed and cursed, that they're now getting to have their sacred union again in the, the frequency expressed through Haliva instead of Hallelujah. And, and when she said that, not knowing that, she had no idea. She had no idea. And, then she, and she said, I said, I didn't do it a service when I told you that. Because she whispered it in my ear. And she I did. said, excuse me, because we're sitting in a very quiet, sacred circle. Yeah. And, and I, I, like I said, I did something that caused her to respond. And because of that, she, she leaned over and says, I'm supposed to tell you this right now. And, and, and so I said, when she did tell me that, she said it quietly. But when we were leaving, you could tell she was perplexed. She was very perplexed. And she was in her 70s. She's very perplexed on what she was wrestling with. But then she said, I didn't do a service when I gave you that word, she said. He says, I'm to tell you this. And she threw her hands up in the air. And she said, it's more of this, she said. It's more of halava, halava, halava. It's more of a rejoicing, she said. But it was quiet in the room, and I wanted to be respectful of that. But she said, that's what I was told to tell you, that halava, it is done. It's completed. It's already done. And so in the union of what came about that, and there was a lot more than that, but then. Well, and how interesting that her hands were up like this, like the, the ancient form of the hay. Right, like right. So we, we comprehended it. And we asked, there were some questions that were asked that she did not even, again, that was a very, very lofty. There was much that was said there. So we already know exactly where we are in the timeline. We, yeah, are, we already know where we are. We already know what's about to happen. People think that there's a job description that, it's already done. Whatever is done is done. We're already there. And we're about to see something in a manifestation of conclusion based on your summation of, and this can, it threatens a lot of people because, and I don't want to do that, but every, if we, if again, from the perspective of the objective or the observer, we are simply realized as where we are is exactly where we need to be. I'm not threatened by any other position than where I am in my current space does not matter. doesn't matter if I'm here, 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 here I am. And so because everything is about being an extension of a hand that will grasp another hand, that will grasp another hand, that will grasp another hand. We're about to see the seventh dimension, the sixth dimension, the fifth dimension, the fourth, the third, all the way through connected as a sequence of events, no longer separate. We call it the language when the planets aligned as a convergence. We're about to see a convergence but it's going to be in the spiritual realm of a stacking of dimension upon dimension as a bracelet is worn that's what it's going to look like everyone is in their perfect place and so no threat unless you want to be threatened by what you think is a lesser position but it's all done it's already been written now everyone's just coming in it's just unfolding it's just itself. unfolding so everyone will oh now i know why because i'm holding your hand and you're holding their hand and they're holding and they're that, hand, hand, that hand. hand so every hand. opportunity will be made as a sequence of events based on our association of one another and that's why it's so profound with the aleph even how it is constructed because those two yodes being pictures of hands that are connecting to one another right so, we've, so been, we've been showing this i mean it's just like yeah. it comes it visits us that way the letters visit us yeah um and, they, and this is what they're telling us is going get ready yeah it's very exciting yeah, I'll say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the throne is already established. So yeah. Haliva, this built. is a Haliva or uh, Aramea Chadutha, which is uh, the word for joy. Chadutha is the word for joy. So that's where we're at right now. Yeah, yeah, we're right on. Uh, we're right on noonday. We're right on the noon presenting itself, and that's what the spirits tell me right now. Get ready for noonday. Yeah, and it's a play on words. It's not like noon as in twelve o'clock. But yet, it is the power of the noon. Uh, it's but yet high noon is when it's the greatest amount of light. So, but all the windows of the ark are about to be open. Everything is going to be open. It's that last window at the top of of Zorim of the mandala. Zorim. The top window is about to be kicked open, and we're about to see it. The light shine through the eyes of those that see. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's why I wear this eye all the time. There you go. You've already been prepared for it. Yep. You've already been prepared for it. That's why you're wearing that symbol because innately you already knew this. Yeah. We just forgot a lot and now we're remembering. Yep. 
Evidently, for a smart girl, I've forgotten more than I ever learned. Well, us too. I mean, really, I hear things like, oh my gosh, we've got books and folders oh and gosh. handwritings and everything going, like, man, I've forgotten, I think, more than I know. But again, what... But it, it's about the being. It's about it passing through you. It's not yeah, about the re, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not about the retention. It's no. always been about the passing it through, and that's been again the greatest lesson for me, is not thinking I can retain right. everything from my limited perspective. Uh, I just want to be it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the whole point. That's I, the whole point. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm learning so that I can be, so that the learning is my being, and I I'm on the road. <laughs> today was uh huge for for me probably more important than any other conversation all of this today that's awesome and, uh it's it's made uh you know i engaged the being of clarity before we met today and um that's what people call prayer that's how i pray i engage living beings and uh, so I, I realized that that would be the outcome. But wow, this is. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's perfect. Let's just say that. That's good. awesome. Perfect is a good word. Well, I will send and you. Perfect is achievable. It is. Um, <laughs> in, in the right it sense. The not, right not the one that I was trying to manipulate. I'll just keep looking at the two of you and I'll be convinced that it is absolutely attainable. Yeah, we just well, need, the we... desire is there and because the desire is there, it will be met in equal measure. So no worries. Yeah, we just no need, worries. We just need to it. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for your time. We love you very much. Thank you guys. Love you. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. shalom.